So here we are again. The left keeps saying that Trump rallies are not actually full, that there's barely any people here. Here you can see Twitter user says, Tony Posnowski says, Trump keeps saying his rallies are full, but doesn't look like it. Wow, I would hate for hashtag empty seat MAGA tour to trend so people knew the truth. So once again, people are trying to claim that Trump rallies are not actually full. They usually use a close up shot. Here you can see some chairs in the background. Oh, Trump's rallies must be dying. Trump cannot possibly win 2020. And you can see this Tony user here, some smug liberal, voted nicest and classiest person on Twitter. Another soy boy spreading lies. Now, we're gonna look into this and we're gonna see, are Trump's rallies truly dying? Is the Trump movement dying? Is the MAGA tour doomed? We're gonna find out. Now, just a reminder, be sure to go visit me on Patreon or Subscribestar if you wanna join and contribute to the channel. As many of you well know, I have been completely demonetized. My channel no longer receives ads. It's one way to help us fight back. So here we see that this tweet got 20,000 retweets and 60,000 likes. And almost immediately, someone debunks the left. They debunk their lies. ALX says, have fun with your handful of empty seats. And here we have two pictures of the Trump rally. Look at this crowd. Look how packed it is. Here you can see the Secret Service keeping him safe. Some area needs to be empty. It's a safety precaution. But as you can see, the place is largely full. Here's another example. So here JJ Dancing Shoes says, angle is everything. When his photogs aren't angling it to make it look full, Fox News shows empty seats. Deal with it. Your dude sucks nuns co parts. Okay, so you literally just said that angle is everything. Here we have an example of what looks like a full stadium, and then you have an example of a few empty seats. Now keep this in mind. Their own logic is double think, because according to their own angle, the first picture could be fake, but they're claiming like this, this could be fake. This could be a uh, angle work to make it look empty. So they're saying that because angle work can make this look full, this must be fake, but somehow this is real. You see the double think there, the, the contradiction? And keep in mind, this is a very close up zoom and this is much farther out. So which one are you gonna believe? The wider camera angle with more people in the photo or the very close up shot? Hmm. Really gets that noggin a joggin. So this is the most annoying part of, you know, the left and these liberal shitheads and these pathetic cucks. Here you can see Sergio says, let's hit him where it hurts, his rally attendance. Book your two free tickets to Trump, New Hampshire's rally, don't attend, and join us in protesting outside. Let's make this go viral. Sergio says, you're welcome everyone, it was my pleasure. Hope to not see you all at the next free rally. <laughs> So when reality calls you a liar, all you have to do is change reality. Reality can be whatever I want. So this is what pisses me the most off about their aggressive left. Here we have someone saying, Trump's rallies were empty, ha ha ha, Mugator is dead. Then we have someone proving them wrong. Ha ha ha, it was not empty. We have bigger pictures to show you. So now what does the left do? Well, if they're not empty, we'll make them empty. Everyone, register free tickets and then don't show up. So it will become empty, even though we're the ones that stole the seats. Despicable, disgusting human beings. Isn't it hilarious? Isn't it hilarious? So in this thread, you mostly have people bad-mouthing Trump, saying that, oh, there's other pictures that show how empty it is, blah, blah, blah. So here, Melissa A says, LOL, I love how liberals lie to themselves with hashtags like empty seat MAGA tour to make themselves feel better. Secret Service left those seats open for security. There are literally 10,000 people outside breaking the record attendance at that arena, but if it makes you sleep better. So here, my friends, is a picture of reality. Not only was the venue jam-packed, outside, there was even more people who could not get in. All here to support the president and watch him on the big screen. But the left can't handle it. They can't handle us making America great again. Because they hate America. They hate us. They hate this country. They want to see it fall apart. Well, I, sir, say screw you. You hate America so much, then leave. Go, go to some country. Go to some communist country. I'm sure you'll be, you'll live very happy there. I'm sure you'll enjoy the free hotels called the Gulag, where everything is expenses free. Paid by taxes, but never mind that. You get free food and lodging, it'll be a great time. Go ahead, go. What, are you scared? 
Ah, yes, maybe you are. Not only were the crowds actually jam-packed in these rallies, um, the left-wing dipshits are going to register tickets so that they can make them empty. It's very interesting. Now, you know, I'm no fool. It's perfectly understandable that not every rally is going to be jam-packed. But what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. So what? Not every event is going to be a blockbuster. It doesn't mean anything. But to the left, it's just further confirmation bias to their delusions. Trump is dying. Ha ha ha. We're going to win again. It's so delusional. So Tim Morta says, inside hashtag SNHU arena, there are 12,000 people. The fire marshal said it was full. This is outside. These are great patriots, great Americans who love their country and support what at real Donald Trump is doing to hashtag keep America great. And again, another picture of all the people outside this rally. If it was really empty, and if the MAGA tour was really dying, then why would all these people show up to show support? It is the question that the libtards cannot answer. Michael Sterling says, When you can't accept the results of an election, you're a divider. When you want your agenda and you lost, you're a divider. When you insult half the country, you're a divider. Trust me, we will never forget this. Rusty Caddy says, I just had to wait in a two-hour line starting at the corner of Valley Cemetery on Pine Street. I unfortunately didn't get in, but I was able to watch President Trump on the Jumbotron because of how full it was. So again, we have more evidence that it wasn't actually full. And here Steve says, fill the capacity. Now, it's not completely full, but... But so what? There's still plenty of people in attendance, and we've seen the other side of this picture. The place is actually pretty jam-packed. Here's another angle. As you can see, this stadium is quite full. It's not completely full, but again, why does it matter? You saw the people outside who couldn't get in in time. I guess a speech had started. These things run on schedules. You know, it's a really incredible day and age where that's where we're at right now. Fiction and reality are colliding. It's hard to tell what's true anymore. Everyone wants to push their own agenda. Everyone wants to lie. Here's another screen cap. Trump 2020 says people outside the Trump rally that couldn't get in. As you can see, even if the stadium wasn't full to the brim, there was a lot of people that showed up for this. But that's pretty much the story. I think it's obvious by now that the left will stop at nothing to degrade Trump at every turn possible. I find it highly disturbing that they're actually trying to take up tickets of actual supporters so that they can make it appear emptier. Um, I think they need to look into this. They need to shut it down. I don't know. I, I think they should charge maybe just $10 for a ticket because at least then, at least then, there would actually be some financial costs to doing so. These people are assholes. It's that simple. They're losers who have no lives. They don't have anything better to do. People take time out of their working life to go see Trump. These people probably don't have jobs to begin with. Ah, but you know what, my friends? These people will stop at nothing to stop the Trump train. And I say full speed ahead. But that's merely the obvious. Well, that's all for now, folks. What do you think about this story? What do you think about the fact that these left-wing people are actually trying, not only lying about attendance at these rallies using specific photograph angles, not only trying to say that the movement is dead despite the huge crowds outside, but are actually trying to make it true by getting all the free tickets and by ruining everyone's day. <laughs> Be sure to let me know what you think. Now, this is just a reminder, you can join me on Patreon or Subscribestar for as low as one dollar. Doing so gets you access to Fight Club, a private Discord server. There are different tiers, you can choose whatever you wish. The next best thing you can do is share my videos on social media. But now it's time for the Q&A session with Mr. Obvious. Govana says, do you think it's better to be hopeful for a future and maintain a positive mindset despite a negative world? Or do you think it's better to prepare for the worst but hope for the best, so as to not feel your hopes let down? This is probably not the best time for me to be answering such a philosophical question. Hope, optimism, positivity. These things are probably healthy, they're probably good for you, and they'll probably bring you more success. I don't have a lot of good experiences with being hopeful for the future or maintaining a positive mindset. I find that life makes it almost impossible to actually be positive about anything. Bad things happen, they continue to happen, bad luck continues. Something is always going to go wrong. If I had to choose between these two, I think the better choice is to always prepare for the worst Hope for the best. That way you can prepare. When life knocks you down, you'll be ready to spring right back up. You can hope for the best, but I honestly think that if you expect life to be good, well, you're either lucky or you got another thing coming. 
So, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. If I have to choose between those two, that is what I choose. As always, thanks for watching. This has been Mr. Obvious, and I'll see you all next time.